And because people are seem to be having less uh, less kids, people are having kids at a, at a, at a, at a at an older age, and we have this aging population. You can expect that this red line is going to start going up like this, and this blue line, if at best, it might stay even, and it's probably going to go down, which makes this net migration number, the net change number, is going to continue to go down. In the 1980s, Westmoreland County uh, hit its peak population. We were at about 309,000 people. I just, if you saw the same article in the Trib last week, we're down to about 355,000 people in Westmoreland County. So, what do we do about it? Uh, the Chamber, the Economic Growth Connection, and Westmoreland County has engaged in a project called Reimagining Our Westmoreland. It started back um, about two years ago, maybe 18 months ago. Uh, a, a group of community leaders got together with West, the Community Foundation of Westmoreland County, uh, economic leaders, business leaders, and we said we need to come up with a plan. So what we did was we engaged with, uh, with a group out of Chicago, Hasil Levine, which is the, uh, which is the, uh, uh, the the planning folks that we are engaged with, they're the consulting firm that we are that we are looking at. Um, you may have seen that we are uh, we are looking for input. We have been looking for input on from the community on a variety of issues. Uh, what are the challenges that we are facing? And so we had been doing that from oh, I guess it was probably about November all the way through just last week. We ended the first phase of the. Um, of the public input, we had about 25 different community uh, community workshops. We did uh, we did online surveys, and what we found was there were about 3,500 people that responded to the surveys. So we were pleased with the number of responses. And here's what we found, uh, and it's not something that is going to be anything that is earth shattering, but it's important that we confirm what the issues are. Uh, public, public population attraction and retention, one of the most important issues that we face in the county. Uh, business retention and attraction, transportation, we've heard consistently that transportation, public transit is, is, is a problem, and it's different across the county. If you're in, you know, we're in Latrobe, so what's the biggest issue for us? It's getting into the city through the Squirrel Hill Tunnels. If you talk to the folks up in New Kensington, they could care less about the Squirrel Hill Tunnels. It's about getting down 28. And if you talk to the folks in Bell Vernon, they could care less about 28 and the Squirrel Hill Tunnels, it's about getting up 51. But the consistent message is getting into the, the central part of, of the region. The other piece of it is, is that we have very limited public transit, um, whether it be light rail, buses, whatever, whatever, whatever it happens to be. So that's one of the pieces that's going to be addressed in the comprehensive plan. Uh, business retention and attraction, uh, which will, which obviously is, is connected to the workforce. Main streets, neighborhoods, livability. One of the things that we have heard consistently through the comprehensive planning process is that people like it here. It, it, it is a nice place to live, but we're just not bringing enough people in. We are a, I've heard it described like this, we're a friendly community. We're not necessarily a welcoming community, and um, and that's because when, when people come from from an, another another place, I, mean, I don't know how many people grew up here, but in some cases, the family tree is more of a wreath. <laughs> everybody everybody already has their 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 connections so well made that um, different parts in, in contrary to different parts of the country is that it's not as, it, it, if you're coming from another part of the country, here, it's very difficult to break in, 
into the, into the networks. Uh, regional competitiveness, obviously, is an important piece for us. Uh, I like to think that Westmoreland County being about oh, 12 to 15 percent, maybe even as close as 20 percent of, uh, of the regional population, that we have an opportunity here. We're small enough to be able to make a quick change, but we're big enough to move the needle. So we have a big, big role in regional competitiveness. Uh, shared services and local government consolidation, ha, that's, that is one that we hear consistently. Um, it, 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 it may be the toughest of all. There are 65 different municipalities in, the, in, in Westmoreland County. Um, that's a lot of local government. And while it is, it is one of those things that maybe at one time it made a lot of sense, right now it doesn't. We have, we have communities that have local governments. Uh, I think North Irwin has, has their own local government. I think they have a population of 12 or 1,500 people. And so those are, are significant problems because, frankly, the communities that are there aren't getting the services that they, that they deserve and that they need. I, I may, might get something thrown at me here, but the school districts, uh, you know, Jeanette School District this year is going to graduate 50 students, uh, 55, 55 students. And so that, that becomes a problem for us from a regional competitive standpoint. Um, I don't know what the answer is, I, I, but I think that, uh, that we can all agree that in, in that kind of an atmosphere, are we, being, are we able to train those 55 kids and give them the opportunities that they deserve in, the, in a district that we are here, we're blessed to be in this district where we have so many different opportunities for our students. Um, I think that the, the regional consolidation is something that will, will ne that's a, definitely need to be uh, addressed. Land use and, and, and regulation uh, development. Uh, Westmoreland County uh, total land use is about 75% is agriculture and natu natural lands. Uh, we only have about 16% of the land is, uh, is commercial. So uh, there are, these are the issues and the opportunities for the, for the county. So one of the things that the chamber, with uh, all of these other charter members, and, and you see I highlighted the intro, uh, there are about 35 organizations that came together and said, we will not be able to solve our workforce development issues in a silo. If, if, if Greater Latrobe thrives and is the greatest school district in the history of, of the world, but yet the other 16 school districts in the county are floundering and they're not being able to provide the, the, the workers that our employers need, we're still not, as a county and as a region, we're still not going to be able to flourish. So. In uh, 2015, actually I think it was December of 2014, we formed the Westmoreland County Forum for Workforce Development. That forum has about 35 charter members, uh, the, the Chamber of the Economic Growth Connection, uh, Westmoreland County, the Industrial Development Corporation, all of the school districts, the, uh, the CTCs, including Eastern Westmoreland CTC, Central CTC, and the Northern CTC, uh, the University, Seton Hill, St. Vincent, um, the Community College, Penn State, New Penn, Dick Greensburg, and I'm forgetting one. Uh, but all of the, school, the, the schools are involved. And then we have also had uh, significant interest from the business community. Uh, Excella Health is sitting on uh, some of the committees. Uh, we have Elliott, we have uh, Kenamental that are, are weighing in on, on the different committees. And so uh, before we get into the full-blown pathways piece of it, I want to show you a video that the Workforce Forum has developed. I think that it will give you some perspective on why this is such an important issue. Education is core to our county's economy. In order to align our educational systems to current local workforce needs, we must first understand the misalignment between the two. 60.9% of Pennsylvania students attend a college or university after high school. 
Many students do this because of charts like this, correlating higher earnings to higher education. This perception has fueled a college for all mentality, causing educators and parents to encourage students to go to school, major in anything, and a high paying secure job will follow. It is only after these students graduate and explore careers that they discover their degree may not prepare them with the skill set necessary for the demands of today's workforce. This misalignment between degrees and on-demand job skills of the workforce causes many college graduates to take gray collar jobs where candidates are often overeducated at too little pay. Tuition prices have skyrocketed, outpacing inflation exponentially. Private four-year institutions increase their tuition by over 200 percent, and public schools? A 270 percent hike since the 1970s. However, going to college still has many pros. During the last recession, those with a degree, or some college, were less likely to be laid off and more likely to be hired back. But not all majors pay the same, nor do all colleges offer every major. Also, some majors are more likely to lead to grad schools than others. All are factors for students to consider. Our economy has shifted to more of a service-based workforce. There are high-skill and low-skill service jobs, but in order to create a flexible workforce, higher education is needed in some capacity. Today's employment projection predicts growth in 30-plus occupations that require an associate's degree or less to obtain and also have wages higher than the county's per capita income. Future career growth in fields such as the energy sector that requires technical skills, training, or an associate's degree will only continue to rise in Westmoreland County. By the year 2020, retired individuals will increase 56%, school-aged children will decrease 15%, and the workforce will lose 7,292 people, comparable to the city of Manesson's population. This adds up to a problem. The workforce is in peril. The baby boomers had fewer children than their respective parents did, and as a result, school enrollment dropped 10% in seven years all while manufacturers are in desperate need of workers. The true ratio of jobs in our economy is one to two to seven. For every job requiring a master's degree or more, there are two jobs that require a bachelor's and seven that require an associate's or less. These jobs are in high demand and this ratio is across the board. It was the same in 1950, the same in 1990, and will be the same in 2030. The economy may grow, but the ratio remains the same. The college for all rhetoric that dominated society needs to be broadened to a post high school credential for all. Students are not on pathways to success right now, costing them and us millions. By changing the focus of educational and career success in Westmoreland County, we can begin guiding students on obtaining a career and being financially stable. But how do we start? Let's say you were considering a career as either an electrician or a business manager. The average annual income for electricians is $51,000. A business manager, $105,000. So at first glance, it looks as if obtaining a bachelor's degree in business is a no-brainer. But when you consider skills, abilities, and aptitudes, this adds a whole new dynamic. What if you have the potential to become an excellent electrician and enjoy your job, but lack the skills and aptitude to become an excellent manager? Then your pay might reflect that. You would then discover that electricians near the top of the pay scale make around $86,000, far higher than the income of a manager near the bottom of the pay scale at $52,000. In today's highly technical, knowledge-based economy, having hands-on skills and perfecting what you're good at 
can be more valuable than getting a degree in something simply to get one. Employers can help students discover what they're good at and interested in by offering learning seminars, paid internships, and apprenticeships so they can explore careers around them. We need to focus our efforts on guiding students toward careers and preparing them with the knowledge, skills, and training necessary to prepare them for today's workforce. Investments in education career programs for high schools, technical schools, colleges, and universities, and local businesses will be vital in preparing the workforce of tomorrow. That's correct. 
yeah, it, I mean, it, it, it does focus uh, a fair amount on manufacturing. Manufacturing in Westmoreland County makes up about 13% of our, of our, our, of our pie. Uh, but yeah, the, 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 we're facing the same things. You talk to Excella Health, they're, they're struggling to find the nurses and, and all of the, uh, every, everything across the, across the lines in healthcare. Anyone else have a question for Mr. I just have a question. A majority of um, people in general have tracked work are self-employed, such as entrepreneurs. I know we have students who as family, with family with family businesses. And are we um, just I mean it's one of those things that we can think about too. That's in terms of doing um, internships, do we have many self-employed people in, because I know contractors there aren't enough to find out people who have mechanic, all different types of businesses. Are we getting much of those people also involved in terms of being part of an internship program. I know for us as teachers, we're also looking, but I was just curious from your, as a- I think the like, short yes. answer. Yeah, short answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 do, do we things. need to have them? We need to have more of them. One of the other issues that we're facing from the demographic side, from a workforce standpoint, is that those those self-employed entrepreneurs that are getting to the point where they're ready to retire, right. there is not a good, um, I guess, network of brokerage for selling those businesses. Mm -hmm. I, I talked to a to a, a business broker the other day. He said the number one the number one way that a person that is of retirement age that sets the price of what they want to sell their business for is how much they need to retire and or how much they need to buy a house in Florida. And so there's there's just not a good there's not a good connection with those, and that's a that's a great opportunity. Those yeah, are people that might want to come in and purchase those businesses that are thriving businesses. But you know the the guy. Yeah, would be your own boss as opposed to being an employee. That's right. Yep. Anyone else want to pull it? Dr. Tepper, go and then maybe. Okay, just to, to piggyback off of this question, um, the answer here at Greater Lake Trail would be in getting those individual businesses involved. Um, we have been working on that, and as you are aware, this past fall, which I'll talk about, we actually had the teacher in the workforce um, visits. So we have to continue to expand and make those relationships so an opportunity possibly would exist for that student to either become an employee, employee and then possibly you know, work their way up and cross business. It's all about that collaboration, but it's making those connections, and that's where we are now. So before I start, I would like to um, make note that the secondary administrators have been very, very integral, as well as the school counselors, in our career pathway system. Um, they've embraced it, they've moved with it, a lot of work has been done, so I want to make certain, before I give the presentation, to make certain that they get the credit that they deserve because they've been working a great deal on this book. Well, I Really look at various pathways 
and we looked at that time the Westmoreland County Pathway Model, which they had had. Along with the pathway models, it's key to note that courses within those career pathways can also be offered for dual enrollment opportunities through Westmoreland College as well as other colleges. So our counselors were very integral in looking at the various pathways and making recommendations um, to fit the needs of our students and where our students are, are looking to, to go in the future. Um, we, I know our building administrators definitely researched other districts' pathway models, and one that you will be hearing about is a partnership that Greater Lake Trail um, has formed with Southerton High School. Uh, actually, this afternoon, we have a team of teachers and administrators going out to Southerton High School. Southerton has been utilizing career pathways since it now joins seven years, nine eight years, eight, 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 eight or nine years, um, and they have a wealth of information to offer us. We had to get our pathway model in draft form, and I say draft form because it's always can be changing or modified because our students begin the scheduling process in January. So we had to start something. We did not want to delay another year and say, oh, let's just wait until next year. You know, that's a year we would lose. So Chad, his last slide, showed our actual pathways, and we have five pathways. And I always say they're not real easy to remember. They should be alphabetically in order. But let's start with arts and communication. So when our students come, came to the table to schedule, and it would have been last year's eighth grade students, which are our current ninth graders, and as we all know, ninth through 12, now the senior <coughs> is ninth through 12. The school counselors work with these students to talk about different things. What are you interested in? Can you? based on skill, do this, and then directed them to pathways that they might be interested in. I want to emphasize, students can change pathways. I hear a lot, how does a student in eighth grade know exactly what they want to do upon graduation? They don't. That's why we're doing this, so they can explore, and it might be something that they really found a niche in, or it might be something where they say, Forget it. There is no way I'm going into this. <coughs> and that is just as important as having the opportunity to be in a pathway where they will be pursuing. We also have engineering, industrial, manufacturing, technology, and some of the actual careers are listed here. You can just take a glance at those. And um, there are various education requirements for these. So you see in the columns the different type of education that would be needed to fulfill engineering and civil, uh, civil mechanical versus maybe what a um, mechatronics major may be. Okay, so those conversations happen with the school counselors and with the students. And if you go back to the video where you see that the electrician is here but might not have the skill level to be a business manager here, that's why these conversations have to take place. Not to discourage a student, but to say your skill level is really awesome here. Your interests are here. Here are opportunities that you may want to pursue. And throughout the way, schedule courses that help support that path. Our health and science pathway, and again, Chad stated about the need for nurses, and um, we do have students at EWCTC as well that have um, certified CS, I don't want to say CSN, that's certified school nurse. A medical assistance, <laughs> thank you. Um, so our students are attending EWCPC right now to get some of those credentials that we talk about. And then human services, hospitality, and public administration, just some of the careers, and again, what the students are asked. A little more detail, if you access our website, you will be able to see the entire slide pertaining to what the students are asked about their interests and the skills that they may possess and the pathways. So it is on our website and it's under um, counseling services. And our last pathway, financial information and business technology. So after we rolled out our pathways last year, <coughs> our students sat down and met with the counselors. I'll go back to Hans Meter. 
we had the opportunity, we had a grant that we were awarded, and it was a wonderful opportunity for a team, myself, Mr. Mates, and Mr. Schivitz, who went down to Nashville, Tennessee. About 12 years ago, Nashville public schools were going to be taken over just because of attendance, lack of performance, high crime and violence. Their community got together, somewhat like the Westmoreland County Workforce Development, and said, what do we need to do to turn this around? We are in some serious trouble. That's when they came up and they pulled in business um, individuals, chamber, et cetera, from all um, walks, educators, as well as parents, as well as students. And in Nashville, you talk about the public uh, transportation system, which we talk about what we lack. Well, every student in Nashville is given a pass, and they have a public transportation um, opportunity so they can seek out a school that actually is in line with their career pathway. So let's say I am interested in performing arts. There are actual schools that focus on nothing but performing arts and the careers in performing arts. So with my transportation, because you would say, hey, how, you know, how do they get there, busing and everything, I would be able to apply to get into the school of my choice for that pathway. Now, obviously, that's a huge system, okay? So when we went there, our eyes were open in many ways, but we said, how can we take this model, and obviously we're one school here, but utilize some of their infrastructure with their partners, how they do mentorships, how they do job shadowing experiences. Also, how can we talk to them about their curriculum and their coursework, which is so integral, because if a student is in performing arts, and they have to take a language arts class like everybody else has to do. What can that language arts teacher do to revise the content of the curriculum to align with that student's interest? So it's very interesting. We brought back a, a wealth of information, but really had to dig through and obviously say, hey, you know, what can we do here um, at Greater Lake Road? And guys, you can speak up any time of any crystals, counselors, or what have you. So after our trip in March, Mr. Lee uh, had taken a team of teachers and administrators out to Sovereign Area High School, met with the staff, toured the building, buildings, and actually were able to observe classes and talk in depth about job shadowing and mentorship opportunities and requirements for our students. The team of teachers that visited Sovereign came back and during our Act 80 day last May, and we're shaking our head, put on a presentation about what the pathways are, what they look like at Satterton, what we feel we need to do here at Greater Lake Trail. Now, I have K-12 staff here, and you may say, K-12, kindergarten, what do kindergarten teachers have to do with career pathways? A lot. The discussion starts early. In our elementary schools, K-6, we have specific career lessons that are offered to our students, or our school counselors actually go into the classroom. Um, again, it's not, oh my gosh, my six-year-old or five-year-old kindergarten student has to pick a career. It, again, is finding their strengths, their areas of interest, and just exposing them. And there are different activities throughout the K-6 buildings um, that are focused on for careers as well. And one is the culminating event that the sixth graders do have a career fair and the career fair is held in, typically at the LES, and um, all three sixth graders, sixth grades from all three buildings come together, have an opportunity um, to not just visit a career fair, it's a working career fair, so um, information is sent home to families, the students talk through the different presenters and why they want to go visit the different presenters, some questions that they may ask, and then there's a feedback and follow-up after the student attends the career fair. So it's very important to get those discussions um, going early. So our 16-17 school year, which is coming to an end here, <laughs> now we'll leave off quickly, um, some of the changes in what we have done to embrace our career uh, pathways. All seventh grade students take a career pathway. Career Pathway course was devised last summer 
Our students are all seventh graders enrolled in a 45-day course where they learn about our pathways, but they can also but they also participate in the interest surveys. They utilize career cruising, and those discussions begin to talk about career strengths, interests at that point in time. They are involved in various projects that they produce as well pertaining to their career interests. In November, we had all of our secondary teachers participate in Teacher in the Workplace. And some of the areas you can see are some of the businesses or corporations that were visited um, in that Teacher in the Workplace. It was actually a half-day uh, session where they, our teachers had questions that they were able to go in and speak with the individuals in those um, companies or corporations to talk about what they need as employees and what students should possess upon if they're interested in that field. We also had teachers visit the ATC, uh, Advanced Technical Career Center in New Stanton. Um, I know our uh, teachers, the, Mr. Crow, was very well to see that as well. Ninth graders, Mr. Crow put together a great um, opportunity for students to go on, you might hear a college visit, but it wasn't just a college visit, it was a post-secondary education uh, visit. Students were given a survey pertaining to their career pathway that they had embraced. And uh, Mr. Pellick and the counselors worked to align what college that student should be visiting to align with their pathway. So our students visited California University of Pennsylvania, Indiana University of Pennsylvania, as well as Westmoreland College that day. So we had groups of students go out to uh, Three different colleges. Do you think you can say that? Five. Five, I'm sorry. That's okay. St. Um, Francis. St. Francis. I'm St. Francis. UTJ. 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 So upon talking again with Satterton High School, we said, how do you measure this? How do you know your career pathways has made have a positive impact on my students? Um, they had discussed the, the REACH survey, which is administered and through the Search Institute, I know the Greater Lake Trip School District had embraced the 40 developmental assets years ago. We have a breakfast of champions that is still around the uh, 40 developmental assets. Well, this was a survey that would pertain to student engagement, interest as well, and we were able to survey our seventh and ninth grade students to see where they are now and how they see themselves. And we're going to continue to survey the same cohort of students. But uniquely, what we have the opportunity to do, which is so great, is look at areas that we may feel we are lacking and what strategies and skills and programming can we focus on to improve those areas. So we are actually in the process right now of scheduling a conference call um, with Search Institute. They have a uh, con consult we'll have a consultation with them where they are really digging through our data and they're going to assist us in identifying areas in which we can work to incorporate um, various strategies. Prior to our conversation with the Search Institute, um, Chad's group in ninth grade and Mr. Shibbett's group in seventh grade of teachers spent approximately six weeks of really digging into the data, what the data stated, what they thought were conclusions, and the teachers, it was great, I had an opportunity to observe a couple of the presentations, presented to their entire staff. This is what we found about the survey, um, the information in the data, why do we feel it looks like this, maybe reasons why it looks like this, what can we do to improve it, etc. And then the teachers actually formulated the questions that were sent to Search Institute, so the consultation will be based on the teacher's questions and the teacher's asks for recommendations. So I think it's very important that the teachers are ingrained in the process, obviously. Um, you know, they're in the trenches every day. So we're hoping to continue to survey those same cohorts of students, but by identifying areas of need to see if that growth continues, 
as well as the engagement through our pathway process. Um, just this past couple of months ago, we had a career fair here for 9th, 10th, and 11th grade. Uh, the focus, though, was on all pathways. Instead of just having individuals come in to present careers, we had five pathways represented by individuals in our community who gave them their time to come forward and speak with our students at Greater Nature about that. And we're very excited because we, we had to start somewhere, and we're talking about the workforce development having a hub that students can access to actually connect with a company or corporation or business for a mentorship opportunity. Currently, we have approximately 30 students in our 11th and 12th grade who are participating in either job shadowing or mentorship experiences. Those students have actually really reached out to individual companies that they feel that they either want to shadow with or mentor, have a mentorship with. So again, this is the kickoff, we're just starting, but our goal at the end of um, the student's year, uh, 11th grade or 12th grade, is to truly have a good mentorship experience in their career pathway of choice. Um, and we we'll either tell them, hey, yes, I'm definitely in on this, or ah, no, I, I'm not. Um, some of you may be aware of our uh, Kenna Mentors Young Engineer Program. And when you go to those graduations, it's, it's, it's really enlightening because you see some of the students that say, I thought I wanted engineering, I thought I wanted to pursue engineering, and now I know I do. And you have other students that say, I'm so glad I took this course because there is no way I want to be an engineer. So again, just as important. Our expectations throughout this implementation process, and I mentioned mention before, is for a seventh grader to take the career pathway course. Um, eighth graders, they begin completing a digital um, court, uh, career portfolio, uh, which talks about, again, strengths, interests, courses, etc., which will continue to follow them throughout their years at Greater Metro. So we also have, and John, I don't know the name of it, from this, uh, the Satterton, which is the hub of our information for students, and I know this is Dr. Connors has been working um, with Mr. Bates on that. It's a pathway <coughs> manager system. So that we will be able to track what the students are doing because you can think about you know, how overwhelming this can be as far as the board. Um, and we're going to be off and running with that for the next school year. Um, we talk about we want our uh, ninth graders again to continue those post-secondary visits. 10th graders for job shadow, 11th graders for mentorship, 11th and 12th graders, along with there may be some type of culminating project for our 12th grade students, but we're still working through the process. We're not quite sure what that would look like, um, but we we'll continue to look forward to that. And again, we have dual enrollment opportunities with six post-secondary institutions. I know that Mr. Engel is very involved with our dual enrollment. For those of you who may not be familiar with dual enrollment, dual enrollment gives our students the opportunity to take courses here at Greater Lake Trail School District while gaining college credit. <coughs> the fees are reduced for our students, um, and as I said, we have the opportunity for our students to take um, uh, college credits through six various institutions. If a student really schedules right, and they have their pathway in mind. And as we continue to develop electives that could be taken under the dual enrollment umbrella, um, they could really graduate with an associate's degree. If they come in looking at being focused, aligning what coursework they are taking, and what credit opportunities are available for them. So it is quite exciting. And I would like to say that our Education Foundation has supported students through this process this, this school year. We were able to assist. I'm going to do that. I don't want to put you on the spot. Student for a moment. 54 students received scholarships. 54 students received a uh, scholarship or assistance to be able to uh, take the courses. Our upcoming goals, I said today we have a group going up to Southerton and in with Mr. Mays. Um, we continue to have our teacher leaders look at their courses to revise, sometimes delete, say, you know what, this is, we don't need this course right now. We think we need a different course, so we need to totally, um, you know, not just revise, but create. 
courses, and this is an ongoing process, and it's probably the most tedious because it's continue, continue to change. Mm -hmm. And um, you really have to look at what is aligned, not only with our standards and our state standards, right, but also with the student interest and the pathways and what's applicable in the real world. And we will continue to collaborate with community and businesses to give our students the opportunity for those mentorships. The ultimate goal is to expose students to as many careers at an early age. Um, also, so we don't have students decreasing student debt by changing majors in college, okay? They're on the six-year plan, and then even maybe on the six-year plan, they graduate and they cannot get a job in their field. Um, we also want uh, students in graduating with a degree to fill, and we think Chad hit that big time where um, you don't get a degree just to get a degree because there not, might not be a career opportunity out there for you or a job to obtain. So exposure, having experience, um, also whether students are going to uh, post-secondary schooling or if they're not, and um, decrease the number of dropouts, decrease that debt. So that's our major. Are there any questions? Don't all ask the <laughs> Thank you. I think Georgia would uh, agree with me that I think um, one of the most difficult things about being an educator, especially in the secondary building, is telling a student that they shouldn't major in something that they want to major in. Because we're all about um, trying to support students in what their aspirations and goals are. And so when a student comes to a counselor or someone else that says they want to be something that we absolutely know there is no need for, we as educators struggle with saying to them, are you kidding? You are never going to get a job in that field. And so therefore, what are you thinking about? We struggle with that. Education is probably one of the most antiquated areas um, uh, that, we, that when you think about an organization that hasn't changed in years. We still have an agrarian calendar, for these days. But when you look at the suggestions that, that uh, Mr. Ammon and Dr. Tucker are talking about, they really are, they are changing. They're changing what we do and how we do it. it may not be easy, and it isn't, um, but I think as we proceed with this in the next few years, maybe over the next 10 years, um, you're going to see some huge changes in in the process of education and what it looks like, especially at the secondary area. Um, when you think about our calendar, when you think about our schedule, when you think about when we start and when we get home, and all of those things, really, do we think it's what's best for kids? Probably not in the end, but because we're so, so ingrained to not changing anything, it's very difficult to even have those conversations, let alone with students but also with each other. And that's really amazing when you think about it, right? So we have to come up with areas and ways, which is what this is all about, is trying to help our students when they leave us. And I, I've said this at the workforce meeting, um, to not only want to stay in West Warren County, but also have a career or an occupation in which they feel satisfied. Parents always use the term happy, you know, as a parent, I struggle with that term now that my kids are adults because I'm not really interested in them being happy. <laughs> I'm interested in them being self-sufficient <laughs> and living on their own and not the parent dying. Um, so those are some things that, as educators, we struggle with that. And how do you have those conversations with parents and with students about, I, the one when I was a high school principal many years ago was students who always said they wanted to major in psychology. I always, I hope, put on a good face. But I'm going to tell you, inside of me, I thought, wow, what are you going to do with that? So I started having that conversation with them. I said, what are you going to do with that? And they go, well, I don't, I'm not really sure, but I really like the course. That's what they say, I really like psychology. Because most students do, right? It's all about themselves. <laughs> so what are you going to do with that? So then I started to say, are you going to get your master's? Because that's what you're going to need. And they'd go, well, why? Well, what are you going to do with a four-year degree in psychology? <coughs> and so those are the conversations. It's not that having a psychology degree is a bad thing. It's not. It's a great major. But what are you going to do with it? That's the conversation that we have to 
have with our students. It's not easy. And just one other comment from my seat, to add your comment about Westmoreland County. You know, I grew up in Westmoreland County, but I lived away from here for a long time, 30 years. And I came back, and I'm going to tell you, some things have changed, but many things haven't. And I will tell you, if you weren't brought up here, that welcoming thing, it's very interesting. You know, there is the idea of welcoming, and there's the idea of being part of. And it's one of those things that as a school community, we really need to think about. We think of ourselves as extremely welcoming. And we may be, but when they walk out that door, are they still welcome? And it's very interesting. In, in today's light, I always, I listen and I hear about Allegheny County and I hear about Westmoreland County and it's like, oh, is it the tunnels? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but they've been the same tunnels my entire life, right? That there seems to be this barrier. And so how do we in Westmoreland County make people want to come here and feel welcome here? It's not only about being welcoming in school. So I think those are some great things that, that the school district's doing, that the workforce development's doing. But it's really that conversation that has to be ongoing. And I, I want to introduce Alan. Alan Martell is from the Latrobe Laurel Valley Chamber. I appreciate your being here. Um, he was not in this position when workforce development all started, and I know that the Latrobe Laurel Valley uh, Chamber is starting to be part of it, which you know is such a great thing because Latrobe obviously is on this part of the county, um, a little bit different than, than maybe um, Bell Vernon and Irwin. That was one of the things that I never realized growing up how large the county was. And areas that were like almost foreign to me as far as they were in Westmoreland County. So, I, if, does anybody else have any questions or comments? I, I think that Mrs. Elder. Yes, so I have something to say as the oldest person in the room. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I, I'd like to remind all of you that um, life existed before this model and was amazingly like this model. I grew up in Allegheny County, went to high school in the Keysport, taught in the Keysport. We did all the things that you're talking about doing without it being exactly um, stated the way you're saying it. But the buy-in was the community's buy-in. The, the idea was, of course, we have to guide our students into the kind of careers that are going to keep our community prosperous, that are going to make sure that we're able to pay for the things we need. We have bus passes hanging around our necks. We rode Penn Transit to get to high school. But all these things dissipated when the big industry went away because all the people who were coming up with this model and fostering this model simply did not ever think that steel was going to go away. If you ever went to McKeesport Hospital in the old days, you always saw that huge complex of steel mill there, working, working, pumping out jobs, pumping out steel, pumping out money for that community. Now we have a model where we all have to learn to be a little more selfless. Where we have to say, wait a minute, Excel Health might be big in Latrobe, but what's going to be helpful to Manesson? What's going to be helpful to New Kensington? The two ends of the county. You know, people who live in Latrobe, when they talk about going shopping, they don't go to the mall, they go on their phone, for crying out loud. You've got to recognize how things have changed. And even if your hair is the same color that mine is, you've got to realize that life never stops. It just keeps going, and change is the one constant. And I was very impressed with the presentation today. I don't think there's anything better we can possibly be doing for the students that those little bright, shiny faces that are going to be attending Latrobe Elementary School 
have got to get out of there and be able to get jobs and support the kind of lifestyle that we all want for them. So I just like to say, I think it's all great, and I just wish that every senior citizen in the community were here watching and listening to this. Thank you, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have any comments? Questions? I know we're in an hour, so I don't want to hold everybody up. Mr. Evans, do you want to add anything to that? I think we covered everything. I, I will say this, and not because I live in this district, but I think that Greater Latrobe is is really setting the mark um, countywide. There are there are a the small handful of school districts, and, and, and Judy and Dr. Tepper and the rest of the administrative staff and the teachers are, are really taking what what I'm saying from 35,000 feet and 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 making it happen with the students. So I appreciate it on two different levels. Thank you very much. Thanks, Alan. Thank you, Alan. Anything else? Any questions for me? <laughs> 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 Conversation. Conversation. Hey, thank you very much. <laughs> 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 <laughs